Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response, I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kirk's Gazette's videos called What Happens If You Destroy a Black Hole? <laughs> and I don't know the answer to this one. The only way I know of even destroying a black hole would be just to wait for it to hawking radiation itself away. Basically, it just evaporates if you wait for long enough, far longer than the age of the universe, for something like that to occur. But as far as after that, don't know. <laughs> Let's check it out. Black holes can destroy everything. But can they be destroyed? What happens if we push physics to the absolute limit, maybe even Whoa. breaking it and the universe in the process? <laughs> Let's create a Anna? tiny black hole about the mass of our moon in the Kurzgesagt labs and try to rip it apart. Experiment one, nuke it. Yes, <laughs> all right. <laughs> this ain't gonna work though. <laughs> it's just gonna make it bigger. Big booms break things, so to set the mood, let's explode the world's entire nuclear arsenal around our black hole. <laughs> One thing um, to point out about this is this would actually be very difficult to do, because setting off a nuclear bomb and setting off all the other nuclear bombs at once actually has to be very carefully coordinated, because really, you get a bunch of big pile of nukes somewhere, you detonate one of them, it's going to destroy all the other nukes, but it's not going to make them blow up in a nuclear fashion. It's just going to destroy the bombs before they can even start their, uh, their chain reaction to produce the amazing destructive force that you see from a nuclear weapon. It's not saying it's impossible. It's very possible, but it involves a lot of very careful, meticulous timing. It's all got to happen like clockwork in order to produce the desired effect, but it's a really cool thought experiment. Boom. <laughs> Black holes swallow whatever crosses their event horizon, matter and energy. <laughs> Just so you'll know, green glowy stuff associated with nuclear is about as realistic as a smiley, hungry black hole face on a black hole. I do love this image, though. It is hilarious. And since E equals MC squared, all the energy that enters a black hole increases its mass. The mass of a black yep. hole is proportional to its size, so as we nuke our tiny black hole, it just gets bigger and more massive. One important thing to point out, yes, E does equal MC squared, but for nuclear reactions, think of it as E equals delta MC squared, or the change in mass times the speed of light squared. Energy is produced when you cause nuclear fission, or nuclear fusion, for that matter. In the case of a modern nuclear bomb, you're actually doing both. You're causing fission to create things hot enough to cause fusion to have even more energy released. And that's why modern nuclear weapons are so much more powerful than the nuclear weapons used during World War II. Experiment 2. Antimatter. Matter and antimatter annihilate each other. What will happen if we throw a moon's mass of antimatter at it? Unfortunately, huh. when an object enters a black hole, the black hole will completely delete its past identity, whether it's made of matter or of antimatter. Black holes only care about gravity, which only depends on the total mass energy of an object. That's an interesting idea and one that I'm not too familiar with, basically throwing an anti-black hole, mainly because antimatter is very difficult to produce a lot of. It would take an insane amount of resources to uh, produce a moon-sized object of antimatter. But hey, this is a fun thought experiment where we have access to possibly a universe's worth of resources and we're doing experiments, so I'm all for it. And the mass of a particle is the same as its corresponding antiparticle, so throwing an anti-moon has the same anti effect as throwing a moon the black hole just gets more massive. Yeah. This deleting ability of black holes is pretty interesting. It means that despite their size and power, black holes are, in a way, similar to elementary particles. An elementary particle like huh. an electron is an extremely simple object, fully specified by just three numbers, its mass, spin, and charge. And amazingly, yeah. the same is true for black holes. They have a mass, they can rotate, and carry an electric charge. Once a black hole forms, it doesn't matter if it comes from a collapsed star, an anti-star, or anti -star. Banana. a banana. It will always be fully <laughs> described by those three numbers, nothing else. 
But if a black hole is basically a weird particle, yeah. could we destroy it with an anti-black hole? <laughs> like that. Artistic Experiment license. three. <laughs> anti-black hole. Whoa. How exciting. A particle has the same mass as its corresponding antiparticle, but opposite charge. Since a black hole has mass and electric charge, its corresponding anti-black hole should have the same mass and opposite electric charge. So note this is different from, I guess, a white hole, a thing that violently ejects matter. I'm not too familiar with anti-black holes. This is, this is kind of a new concept. <laughs> but sure, why not? What if we make them collide? Sadly, the charge will just add up and cancel out. So after the collision, we'll just get a new black hole twice as massive with no charge. Now that's interesting, a no, no charge. And really the charge just kind of comes from what it happened to engulf. I guess it is possible to have a chargeless black hole. Okay, we need to think bigger and stretch physics harder. <laughs> Bananas mode. <laughs> Experiment four, destroy the event horizon. Okay. It's true that a black hole can carry spin and charge, but even for these crazy objects, there are limits. If the spin or the charge of a black hole becomes too large, something really weird will happen. The event horizon will dissolve. In a simplified way, we think that. of black holes as hiding a singularity inside, an infinitely compressed mass with such strong gravity that absolutely nothing can escape from its surroundings, not even uh, light. Yep. This is why a black hole looks like a black sphere of nothingness. The event horizon is the outer edge of this ultimate prison. Cross it, and you'll never be able to come back. But when a black hole rotates, it works a bit like a spinning washing machine. It's as if the rotation <laughs> wants to repel nearby objects and push them out of the black hole, which doesn't happen because its gravity is so strong. But if the rotation gets too fast, this effect will win and the event horizon will disappear. Nearby objects won't be faster. imprisoned forever anymore. The same thing happens with the electric charge. Make it too large and our ironclad jail will break open. If we manage to destroy the event horizon, the singularity would still be there, and objects would still naturally fall towards it. It's if you hit it, it, you would still die horribly and quickly. <laughs> yeah. But the vicinity of the singularity won't be an inescapable prison anymore. You could get as close as you want and come back. This should count as destroying the black hole. Come sure, I mean, I guess it's a bit like... You can say if you remove the sun somehow, you destroyed the solar system because it doesn't have a gravitational center to go around. Okay, I'm open to this interpretation. <laughs> Experiment five, overfeeding. Whoa. All we have to do is to overcharge or overspin the black hole. We could do this by throwing objects with a small mass and a lot of charge or angular momentum so that the charge or spin increases faster than the mass. Okay. We have to overfeed the black hole until it reaches the point where it breaks open. However, whether you can actually do this is the subject of passionate argument among physicists. I was going to say is, since we've established we can't over overmass it, is there really a limit to the charge? I mean, I'd imagine there's, there's limits to everything, but we just haven't figured out what the limits are. But to charge versus spin, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Think of a charged black hole. Equal charges repel each other, and the more of the same charges you squish together, the more they push back. So let's say that we have a negatively charged black hole and we want to overfeed it with electrons, for example, whose charge is far larger than its mass. Yes. The electrons will feel an electrostatic repulsion. And the more electrons we throw, the larger the negative charge of the black hole will be and the stronger the repulsion. But once we reach the upper limit, the electrostatic repulsion will be so strong yes. that it won't allow any more electrons to come in. At this point, the black hole will refuse to be overfed. With the spin, it's similar. Once the black hole reaches its upper limit, it won't gobble more spin. But some scientists have discovered what looks like... How's the limit of spin work, though? Because I, I can understand charge being repulsive, but spin, is it just an absurdly high centrifugal force? Maybe? Pole. If an instant before the black hole reaches the limit, we throw the right amount of matter in in just the right way, it looks like we could actually overfeed it. Most scientists are skeptical, but let's give it a try anyway. The hmm. end. Breaking physics. Hmm. There is a catch, though. The event horizon of a black hole hides oh, the singularity. Cool so destroying the horizon would leave us with a naked singularity, one that is not hidden by an event horizon. And they this poses a problem. It could mean the end of physics as we know it. 
There's a big dirty secret about black holes. Contrary to widespread belief, the singularity of a black hole is not really at its center. No, it's in the future of whatever crosses the horizon. Because it curves time. Black okay, holes got it. warp the universe so drastically that at the event horizon, yeah. space and time switch their roles. Once you cross it, falling towards the center means going towards the future. That's why you can't escape. Stopping your fall and turning back would be just as impossible as stopping time and traveling to the past. So the singularity is actually in your future, not in front of you. That's crazy to and think about. And just like you can't see your own future, you won't see the singularity until you hit it. But you also can't hit something that's in your future, only sort of experience it. Like you'll experience your next birthday when it happens. I guess that makes sense, because I saw in like one of their other videos they did, like if you're an outside observer watching someone fall into a black hole, they would just kind of disappear once they cross the event horizon and just sort of become out of reach. And that's actually a good analogy, because after all, they, they can't see the future from that, their perspective. The singularities that are in the future are not a problem because we can't see them or interact with them. But a naked singularity would be in front of us for all of us to see. What would we see? Well, Be like the point the is that it's impossible to know. A singularity huh. is a region of infinite gravity, and gravity is the bending of space-time. At a singularity, the bending is so, so radical that the fabric too. of space-time is literally broken. Space and time don't exist anymore. This means that you can't predict anything, since predicting means making a forecast about where and when something will happen. But where and when have lost their meaning. <laughs> so we have an unpredictable thing with infinite gravity and therefore infinite energy. This means that anything could come out of it for no reason, from a pile of bananas to lost socks or a solar system. Predic there you go. That's, there's where the socks are that I lost. They went into a naked singularity. Makes sense. Reality, causality and physics as we know it would break down. We think that singularities should exist in nature because we can prove that under very general conditions, gravitational collapse leads to the formation of singularities. However, scientists think that nature forbids the formation of naked singularities. Something it's enforces censored. the creation <laughs> of an event horizon around them to prevent their insanity from infecting the rest of the universe. Without event horizons, physics may not make sense at all. So although black holes have been portrayed as the <laughs> ultimate monsters of the universe, they may actually be the heroes so that keep us safe from the madness of singularities. I want to cuddle a black hole. So if we do destroy the horizon, we might destroy the fundamental rules of the universe. You know what? Let's not do that. Conclusion. The safe option. <laughs> as far as we know, there's just one safe oh. method to destroy a black hole. Wait. All black sure, holes yeah, emit tiny radiation. particles, a phenomenon called Hawking radiation. This process causes them to slowly lose mass until they eventually evaporate, leaving behind no horizon and no naked singularity. The time it takes for a black hole to completely evaporate depends on its mass. For our mini black hole the size of a speck of dust, it will be about 10 to the power of 44 years. 10 billion trillion trillion times the present age of the universe. And like they said, that's at the low end. The supermassive ones were, I think, are like 10 to the 100th years or something even crazier. Just mind-boggling. But that also means like the really small ones, ones that are like 10 to the minus 15 meters, can hawking themselves away pretty quick. So make of that what you will. So is it possible to destroy a black hole? Yes. We just have to wait. <laughs> oh, that was fascinating. I love the breaking physics part, but the whole just have to wait is a bit of a cop out. It's like, hey, can you travel in time? Well, sure, we're traveling into the future right now, just at the rate of one second per second. <laughs> I love that video. That one has probably my favorite music that I've heard in one of these Kurtz Gazette videos. I, these are just so good. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.